it's day 15 and we're somewhere over Kazakhstan, uh, unless I've got this upside down. <laughs> but uh, no, good news is we're still on schedule, aren't we, Johnny Boy? Hey? Yes, Chef. Yeah, me and Johnny got this whole chef, sous chef thing going on. <laughs> well, let's put that down there. <laughs> oh, yay! I don't know, we've, uh, we've done some mad shit in the past, but this really takes... My, my name is... My name, oh, God. My, my name is Philip. Philip Phillips. I design stationery for W.H. Smith. <laughs> This man means me harm. I've worked out that he's some sort of celebrity chef. Terrifies. He thinks it is a travel program. He thinks I'm his friend. He's taking me around the world. It, it don't fucking belong. We never learned. Who are you talking to? I miss you, Rebecca. Tell the kids I love them. If you see this, anyone sees this. It's not television. Hey! Hey! What do you reckon? Нашел эту кассету. На месте крышения жала. Куда там Чарли Бурману? She's always coming over to my desk to get a pencil and, you know, brushing against my shoulder and smelling my hair, and it just makes me feel very uncomfortable. So basically, you're accusing Claire of sexual harassment in the workplace? No, I. Well, sort of. Well, let's get her in here, see what she has to say about it. Oh, that's Claire, can you come in here, please? Oh, I'll, I'll have to call you back. Uh, uh, yes, Claire, come in and shut the door, please. Now, um... Claire, this, this is a, a, a little bit delicate. Um, M Mike says that you've been a bit inappropriate in, in the office. What? What do you mean? Well, it's, it just it sometimes feels... I, I feel a little bit uncomfortable sometimes with the, with the touching. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, genuinely. I, I thought I was just being, you know, friendly. There you go, Mike. She was just being friendly. And from my point of view, I don't know what you were complaining about. Martin? I know this seems like a lot of fuss about nothing, but I honestly think if I were a woman... Maintenance! Oh, yep, come on in. Oh, I'm really not comfortable with... Mike, it, it's fine. They're just doing something with the wires in the ceiling, and none of them can speak any English anyway. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Mike, you, you were saying... I was just saying, I really think you would take this a lot more seriously if I were a woman. Yes, you're, you're right, Mike. But perhaps I was being unfair. Sorry, Mike. Uh, Claire. Yeah, well, I'll make more of an effort to respect your personal space, Mike. Thanks. There you go. That's all sorted. I, I think we'd probably better stay here till he's finished. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, have you got any exciting plans for the weekend? Not really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Me neither. I am going to Centre Parks. <laughs> it's Saturday night, it's 6.38, and it's time for Bavaria's top entertainment show, Reports Mode. Good evening, good evening, and welcome. Well, that's enough about the time of day. So, let's get straight down to show business. Sharpen your pencils, it's Report One. <laughs> Tickety bonk, stable at 5.6. Point two above the arithmetic mean, so hearty forty. <laughs> now, hold on to your helmets. As we head down to the quarry for report four. <laughs> a 
like they want a crackpot. Get it? Stop. I'm killing you. <laughs> On now, reports mode collection time. <laughs> Thank you, Feldman. <laughs> hmm. Of course, as many of you spotted in last week's report too, Cell DS should have read moderate. <laughs> Honky tonky. <laughs> so, let's take a break from all those reports to see how we at Reports Mode are doing in efficiency. <laughs> ah, levels have been maintained as they always must be. Isn't that right, Captain? <laughs> <laughs> That's right! So this Deep South sketch... Yeah. Are we doing the accents? Yes, of course we're doing the accents. We're also wearing the costumes. What do you think we were going to do? Just hold the script up to a camera? Yes, all right. Actually, you'd love that, wouldn't you? No, in fact, I'll tell you what your ideal sketch show would be. Oh, please do. It's us wearing dinner jackets, sitting behind a desk, reading the scripts to camera on autocue. Finished now. Hello, welcome to the sketches. Evidently not. Interior day, a shop. A gentleman whose attire proclaims him to be from the southern United States enters. Dialogue. Ah, Mr Beauregard, good day to you. And good day to you too, Harlan. Couldn't think of another southern surname. L the point is, we're doing the accents. Can you do a southern American accent? Of course I can. Go on then. Bass hog. Ba bass hog. Bass hog. And are all the lines in this sketch boss hog? I can say other things too. I I'm just a girl who can't say no. I mean, a terrible fix. It's Welsh. Mommy, mommy, tear down the curtains and make me a dress. It's backwards. Y'all. <laughs> Gal, ball, ball, call, ball, call. Here. Actually, that's very good. Thank you. All you have to do now is teach me how to do it, and we're away. Ah, oh, Mr. Beauregard, good day to you. And a very good day to you too, Harlan. The designs are ready and waiting. If you were to step this way. Now, just to clarify, this is for everyone in your club to wear, isn't it? Not just the leaders. No, 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 this, this is for all of us. We require a smart, functional uniform that identifies us as members of the club and gives us a certain authority. Exactly as I thought. Well, I think you'll find this is perfect. <laughs> what the hell is that? I knew you'd like it. It's a ghost costume. Uh, no, it's imposing and awe-inspiring. It is if you're nine and scared of ghosts. Otherwise, it's a big nighty. I think you're being very unfair. And, and what's this all about, the, the pointy hat? It'll make you look taller. It will not make us look taller. What it will make us look is pointier. But you specifically asked for a pointy hat. I, I meant like a, a tricorn hat, like a highwayman, not a Rapunzel hat. Look, well, just, just try it on. That's, that's all I ask. Once you see the effect. Oh, terrific. That's the perfect finishing touch, that is. Would you say you have an unusually small head? No. All right, fine, fine. I can cut eye holes. Eye holes? It'll increase your mystique. Harlan, perhaps you're under some sort of misapprehension. My companions and I have banded together to promote the resurgence of the Confederacy and subjugate the insolent slave race, not to go trick-or-treating. And, and, and what's this? KKK? It's the initials of your society. The initials of the Confederate Campaigners Club? <laughs> uh, no. No, no, of, of course not. It's, um, I came up with a new name for you. We don't want a new name. Yes, you do. Mine's much better. What is it, then? What is it? It's the... the... <laughs> uh, it's funny, it's just gone out of my head, but... Goodbye. Wait, wait, it's the... Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan? Yes. Those are just meaningless noises. How are we supposed to introduce ourselves to people? Hello, we're the new death-dealing militia of white supremacy. We're called the Ku Klux Klan, affiliated with the whip wap wop and the bingly bongly boo. We're easy to recognise. We're the ones wearing bedsheets and peeking out through the eye holes in the massive pointy hats we wear over our faces. All right, you don't like it. That's fine. There's the other one. I never thought you'd like that one. This is the good one. This will inspire your followers and strike fear into the hearts of your enemies. <laughs> a massive little girl. Exactly. What could be scarier than a massive little girl? Freaky. So this is it. 
But for our big inaugural rally tomorrow night, we either have to go dressed as pointy ghosts or enormous girls. Well, I'm sorry. It simply never occurred to me that you wouldn't like either. <sighs> Fine. We'll, we'll take 60 pointy ghosts, but I'll expect a discount. <laughs> Those bigots look like twats. We said we're not doing the accent. <laughs> so, Minister, we've run every viable model through the computer, and it looks like there just are no easy solutions to this recession. Yeah, raising VAT, cutting VAT, raising interest rates. Raising interest rates and VAT, lowering income tax and raising VAT. None of it seems to really help. Have you tried kill all the poor? <laughs> so, with respect, you know, we've had this conversation before. I'm just saying, have you tried it? No, of course we haven't tried it. We're not going to try it. I'm not saying do it. I'm just saying run it through the computer, see if it would work. Whether it would work it is not the issue. So you think it might work? That's pretty right-wing. <laughs> no, I, I don't think it'll work. I think it might. It, it wouldn't. <laughs> Why not? Well, because they do all the... You know, they, they clean all... The, we need them for all the things that we don't fancy. Aren't you thinking of immigrants? Look, there's an easy solution to this, guys. Just run it through the computer and check. Well, no. I can't believe you haven't done it drunk as a joke. What? Well, just do it quickly. I'm not going to do it. Why not? Because it's offensive and evil. I don't see the objection. The computer's not going to be offended. Just run it through. The computer will say, no, it wouldn't help to kill all the poor, and I'll stop going on about it. Oh. Right then. See? Satisfied? Have you tried raise VAT and kill all the poor? <laughs> Look, we're just fact-finding. Why do you so want to kill all the poor, sir? I don't want to do anything of the sort, but I think it's important to know if it would help. Of course it wouldn't help, but the computer says it wouldn't help, so we're not doing it. That's why we're not doing it. What? That's the only reason why we're not doing it. Bloody hell, now I'm offended. <laughs> I'm sorry? I shouldn't have asked you to run that through. It turns out if it had come out positive, you'd have started work by now. Um, here I am, blue sky thinking amongst friends, and I didn't realise that it's only cold-hearted pragmatism that's keeping you from pumping gas into little. I'm confused, sir. Look, just because a computer says that killing all the poor will help the economy doesn't mean I'm going to do it. It's morally wrong, Anne. That's why we can run it through the computer, because we know whatever it says, we're not going to do it. That's the page I'm on, Anne. Are you going to burn the book? No. We were pretty sure that child brothels would help with arts funding. But does that mean we did it? No. Never got beyond a pilot scheme in Yeovil. You're quite right, sir. I'm sorry if I in any way cast aspersions on your commitment to the sanctity of all human life. It's, it's all right, guys. I think it's pretty clear what we need to do. Shave half a percent off interest rates, shore up the pound, keep VAT steady for now, and round up all the dwarves. <laughs> yes, Minister. Watching the British Emergency Broadcasting System. The time is slipping inexorably away. <laughs> and to help with that, as usual, it's the quiz broadcast. Hello, good evening, and remain indoors unless infected. <laughs> Hopefully not infected are our three contestants tonight. I'm infected. <laughs> Bad luck, Professor. <laughs> and our other contestants are Peter, who you may remember. Hello. And Sheila, who you're also permitted to remember. Yes. And Sheila, when we last saw you, you were being taken off to be voltage calmed. Is, is that right? Yes. How was it? Yes. <laughs> That's great. Yes. Is it true that you can only say yes now? Yes. Were you answering me, or did you just say that because you can only say yes? Yes. So you can say other things? Yes. <laughs> That's priceless. <laughs> that really is TV gold. <laughs> Please do not attempt to use this programme as currency. Barter is forbidden and punishable by exposure. <laughs> so, our first round, as ever, is the quiz round. Fingers on hands, please. <clears throat> And that's the alarming alarm. Do not be alarmed. It means it's time for a music round. Have a look at this clip. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. But that's enough about our star prize. 
I bet you'd like to win that, wouldn't you, Sheila? Yes. <laughs> Change the bloody record. <laughs> Is the name of our music round. So let's bring on the bloody record. <laughs> What is the link between the bloody record and the event? Is it A, unknown, B, known but prohibited, or C, yes? <laughs> Sheila? Yes. D do you mean C? Yes. Bad luck, Sheila. So close. But the answer is, of course, A, unknown. Yes. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to us. That's right, Prayer and a Pint is 41 years old this week. Hello there, I'm Donny Cozy, and I hope you can join me for this very special Prayer and a Pint, which this week comes to you from the beautiful city of Tehran in the east. Mention Iraq to most people, and they'll probably think of those Indiana Jones type fellas on the news. But there's also a lot of skiing here. But that may be because, as Azid down here has just kindly pointed out to me, Tehran is in fact the capital of Iran, and not in Iraq at all. <laughs> Which may explain what's happened to Sherry Lungi and Max Headroom who I was hoping would be joining me for this week's show. <laughs> but I'm very happy with the company I've got here, and there's no mistaking what I'm tucking into. Something you probably wouldn't associate with Tehran. It's a Boots Egg and Crest sandwich <laughs> that I bought at the airport. <laughs> Cracking stuff. <laughs> and here, of course, is me birthday pint. Yalla, yalla, lads! <laughs> First day as a barrister, and I just don't know if I'm going to be any good at barristering. Perhaps I can help. Where did you come from? Were you hiding behind that pillar? No. Now, here's my advice. Take these and drink them. <laughs> but no buts, just drink. How do you feel? Actually, I, I feel rather good. Thanks. Um, I said, thanks. It's all right.
Yes! I got that guy off that vicious sex murder, even though he obviously did it. <sighs> Have you been there the whole time? Um, yes. Why? Because I'm one of a group of very important people who've been watching you for quite a while. We have great plans for you, which is why earlier I let you in on one of the world's greatest secrets. What secrets? That everything mankind does is much, much easier if you're ever so slightly drunk. <laughs> that sensation you get between half and three quarters of the way down your second drink of the day, when you've just taken the edge off and feel that anything is possible. <laughs> How did you feel after that wine I gave you? Like... Anything was possible. Exactly. Come with me. <laughs> Welcome to our secret headquarters under the head offices of Oddbent. Oh, what is the point of the blindfold if you just tell everyone where we are? Sorry, forgot. But then again, I am slightly drunk, as I hope you soon will be. Who are you people? We're a group bound by the creed that humanity is better and more noble after very nearly two drinks than at any other time. We've been around for centuries. No one knows quite how long, but then it's hard to be precise when you're constantly slightly pissed. <laughs> Suffice to say that at all major historical events, we've been in the background, gently swaying from side to side. <laughs> My God. You're the inebriati. I thought you were just a myth. Actually, we prefer the term Knight Stippler. But aren't you supposed to be evil? Oh, you've been reading too much fiction, young man. We are a force for good, sworn to maintain a level of just enough smashness to make everything feel lovely. But how? Our methods are subtle. I myself have a claret drip. I have a can of special brew pumping slowly and constantly into my stomach. You may have noticed me snacking regularly on liqueur chocolates. Ugh. Drambuie. And Malcolm over there is about to administer himself with one of his hourly Quantro enemas. Bottoms up! Are you sure you aren't evil? We may have made one or two mistakes. It's basically our fault that if you press delete in Microsoft Word, it puts the entire document into eight point times New Roman, whether you want it to or not. But overall, we come out very much in credit. What do you want with me? Today's youth is all binge-drinking maniacs and tight-ass teetotalers. And that will inevitably lead to a whole new generation of Stalins and Hitlers. Hmm. Will it, though? Yes! <laughs> Which is why we need fresh, young, lovely, slightly drunk people like you. After all, no gently drink-wobbly person could ever commit genocide. They'd be too busy buying crisps or trying to remember the Oscar-winning films of the 70s or just having a small nap. With our backing, you'll be president of the world in ten years. The only condition is that you must never, ever have any more than slightly less than two drinks. Never? Never. Beyond that state of mildly intoxicated perfection lies drunken madness, third pints, kebabs, and destruction. So, what do you say? dropped to zero since you added the equivalent of a glass and a half of rosé per person to the water supply. Who could possibly want to fight after a lovely bit of rosé? Indeed. And the way you averted that Third World War. All I had to do was get a couple of creme de monts down Ahmadinejad and Bin Laden and they loosened right up. Your boozy bonhomie has served the world well. Like a more effective Ken Clark. We thank you. Well, no. Thank you. Cheers. You finished your second drink! Surely it can't do any harm. <laughs> Whoops. You know, a man with access to nuclear weapons really should never get a bit fighty. 
Might as well get shit-faced now. Yeah. 